Um, for my advanced video art class, I was asked to make one film this semester and um, to really develop something that would take an entire semester. And also, I'm really interested in animation and I just like to experiment with it even though I don't know how to do it. Um, so, I needed an idea. So I decided, because I, I don't dream, so I went to all my family members and people really close to me and interviewed them about their dreams because I they have crazy dreams and and it really created this rich world. Um, I, I constructed my own dream from their dreams and then I animated it um, with stop bow and, and hand drawn and After Effects. Um, originally, my idea for sound was to use the narration, narrations that came from the interviews, so using just the interviews and piecing them together as a long narration, and then adding sound effects with that, with a minimal musical track, like with a piano or something. That was my original idea. So to have, it's really important. I really wanted sound effects, and, yeah. and because it's an animation, so there's absolutely no sound, and I needed to create an entire world, world that was believable. After watch, watching through the film and working with my friend John Beers, who actually, he works as a composer for reality television, so he's really into doing like a lot of drama, like to dramatize certain points and everything, to find a story there with music, which actually ended up being interesting because I wanted minimal music, but after watching the piece, I figured out that it was confusing and there weren't really pauses. Um, for people to take a breath with all the chaos that was going on. Yeah, the rolling dissonance idea didn't end up being like a traditional rolling dissonance like you hear in a Hitchcock score. Well, this is obviously not Hitchcock, but it ended up being, there was, there's, it's very repetitive. The song feels like it's looping and looping like, and also, um, we decided by having a looping soundtrack and also there's points of silence and points where it gets, quieter to give um, the audience a pause and everything that's going on. And actually the music, is, the sound and the music especially is really important because this piece was so confusing. I didn't like it at all after I finished the animations. Um, I felt like, I'm like, people are not going to know what this is, it's just chaotic. But once we added the music and the looping and the pauses, um, it really made it flow. The music was absolutely vital to decoding what was actually ha happening in the dream and also to indicate that it was a dream in the first place and it, that was not coming across at all with just the image. Um, so I just thought that was pretty amazing because I've never worked on a score before and I was just really surprised with the outcome. We went against being minimal because this needed a full soundtrack to like really make this world come alive. Um, it was whimsical like I wanted because at the style of the animation, I want it to look like a pop-up book. It's flat and then um, sceneries pop up. The accordion really made that whimsical like storybook feel and we decided to use that because there's a part where this, there's this um, four-headed barbershop quartet monster and he looks like, you know, like he's from New Orleans and we wanted like the French style. and. That's where the accordion came in, and it worked. I think like it works really well. I've been there. Okay, so most of the work for this piece, aside from the music, because music actually ended up being easier, or easy, was the folly and sound effects. Um, it was the most fun part out of the the entire the entire animation. Everything I feel like the folly was the most fun part, but it was also really difficult. Um, but I feel like we were successful. The whole reason I was able to to record sound with microphones is because I have a friend named Micah and he is really into sound and collects mics and has um, just like all the equipment and he wanted to help, like help me record. Um, because this is an animation, sound effects are key to creating a world and ambient noises and all that to make it believable. And then also the other thing to take in mind was because this is a dream and we don't normally think about sounds in dreams. Um, we, I wanted them just to be also kind of awkward noises. Like, it could be, because it's an animation, I can have the sounds be whatever I want because it's not like 
set in the real world with live footage, but at the same time, I didn't want it to be like really, it is realistic, but um, it also sounds like, you know it's the sounds are the sounds, but also, you know, like that's probably not like really what it sounds like, but I, we did Folly for the ocean and we took a piece of turf and just rubbed our hands across it, or I did this and rubbed it in a loop and it sounds like the waves kind of rolling and, but you know, if I was to get a real like clip of what waves sound like, it probably doesn't sound like that. Yeah. It was appropriate to use just weird things to make the sounds, because um, that's what Foley, Foley artists actually do. We made every noise in this piece, it was really fun. Yeah. Um, so I'll go through my favorite noises. So one, the, the, the astroturfing with the rubbing to make the ocean. We use like this old ticking toy to be the sound of the elevator going up. We used a bell pepper and ran our fingers on it to be the noise of the spider running. And there was a drum set actually. I was playing with the, the cymbal. I was playing with the cymbal and like I was hitting it and then putting my hand on it and it makes this low just hum. Like you can feel it running through your body and low frequencies are just so attractive to humans in general. So we capture the noise of this low gong, but you don't know it's a gong. Actually when you hear it, you feel it more than you actually hear it. And it ended up being the perfect noise for this part where you're in a labyrinth and there's these ghost alien creatures floating around. It's like this humming noise is really, is kind of creepy, but at the same time it's like really pleasant to the ear and that ended up being like the perfect noise for these odd creatures. You don't even know what they are. It ended up making these creatures that were actually, were told to me by my husband to be these like really attractive creatures, even though they were creepy. That's how he described it. And uh, the gong perfectly captured like what he was trying to tell me. Experimentation was a huge part. We we just collected anything, like in the kitchen, in the house, everything, and just started making noises. And then, along with the folly, after we finished the folly, we started to record um, vocal noises for the animals and monsters throughout the film, which is really fun too, because we all discovered we could make. A lot of noises. We didn't. Use, yeah, that was really fun. Actually, my husband did the hyperspeed noise because I wanted a noise for when the character whose point of view this is when she's flying into um, the next part of her dream through space, and he made a hyperspeed noise. It was just really cool. Like all of a sudden, like oh, I think I can make this noise. I got to make a seagull noise. I like. I know how to. I can mimic seagulls, and we recorded it and put it in there. So that was really fun because um, it actually ended up working. It's not even for a seagull, it's for a pterodactyl, so I can make a pterodactyl noise. And then um, James, my husband, and Micah, um, they made the noises. I wanted the gorillas to cut their, their deformed gorillas in the, the animated in one part, and I wanted them to be talking because they're in a house. So if I imagined it, no words would actually be coming out, so I, they were just making noises that we just assume are gorillas. and it, it was fun, and I did I did the female gorilla who was like one line, like one little hmm. <laughs> did oh Micah and James also did dinosaurs. Like we went, oh, it took so many takes to like figure out what I wanted the dinosaur to sound like. Like because they make one noise and be like, no, it sounds too much like a dog. I finally ended up with this dinosaur noise. It's just really fun. I'm actually gonna animate the dinosaurs to match the roaring noise because I like it so much. At the end of the film. Um, you end up in hell, and flying monkeys are trying to drag you into hell, and um, I, ha I directed James to do a monkey, he can make a monkey noise, but we mixed it with like a caw, so the mo sound starts out of the monkey, and then at the end it's like caw, caw, so it just layers, there's like monkey birds everywhere. One of my favorite sounds we did, which we, actually this would be the only part point where we outsourced because we didn't have time to record um, singing is we, we we found a barbershop quartet song um, about dreams and distorted it to make the barbershop